best part about this episode is y'all get to stop complaining about episode 3. Let's check it out. Hello the troopers and welcome back to General Cannabis Bunker. Thank you so much for joining me here on another full-on spoilers review of Acolyte. Today we're going to be taking a look at episode 4, Day. But before we get started here with the episode, I just want to remind you to check out the rest of my reviews of the uh, first three episodes. Man, there are some nice comments in there. So make sure you check those out. Also, don't forget to follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all of that good stuff, General Kenobi's Bunker. So we start the episode on Kefar, where we see Master Kalnaka basically going to his crib, where he has some uh, interesting decorations, obviously resembling the emblems that the witches use, especially the you know circular patterns like the ones that May has engraved on her forehead. So we are back to Coruscant where uh, Osha basically goes to see Jackie and say goodbye. Um, Jackie's like, oh, I thought you were staying. And she's like, nope, I, you know, May is the Jedi's problem. I'm not a Jedi. Of course, Jackie's like, well, I know you care about her. So I thought you were going to, you know, help us like apprehend her. Osha's like, nope, can't do that. So I'm just going to bounce. But let's hang out sometime and trade stories about Master Soul. Um, she actually confesses that she's not saying goodbye to Master Sol. She says, I've caused him enough trouble. Then we catch up with Mei and Kamir, who just landed on Kafar and are basically preparing, you know, to uh, catch up to Master Kalnaka. Uh, Kamir does warn Mei that she needs him to guide him to where uh, Kalnaka is. Apparently, this planet is massively... Uh, unexplored and thus you know very dangerous so this was a cool scene we get um sort of like a jedi meeting type of thing going on not necessarily a council but they are reviewing the recordings of may and how she was fighting they basically agreed that she's still you know undisciplined but def somebody has been definitely training her and obviously they're curious to know who her master is master soul tells her that she doesn't know who the master is but she is afraid of him so uh, it is determined that she needs to be apprehended, of course, and that the main goal is to determine who this master is. Sol uh, asks Vernestra to send him again to capture May. She actually confronts him about why didn't he tell him that May was alive or that there was even a remote possibility of her being alive. And Sol does reply that nobody could have survived that fall and he never imagined that she could have been even, even had a remotely chance of surviving. May and Kamir have this little interesting uh, back and forth about the master, right? And she basically asks, why why do you serve him, right? And he just says, I just owe him. You know him. He just collects people. Um, he flips it back to May saying, what do you think that it means to kill a Jedi without a weapon? You know, is it a test or what do you think is going on? And she's like, I don't know, but it's pretty much impossible to do. Sol catches up to Osha, who's about to leave the temple and I think to the surprise of nobody, he's like, hey, I need your help to come get May with me. And she's like, nope, I'm done. And he's like, pretty pleased. And she's like, okay, I'll go with you. So we get the Jedi on a mission to Kafar, And it's quite the squad, actually. It's something like eight or nine Jedi uh, plus Osha and a tracker that they took from the temple uh, to help them track Master Kalnaka. So um, it they're very kind of, they're very stiff, you know, this Jedi. Uh, so I get where Yord is coming from. He kind of fits right in with these guys. Osha and Yord have a little bit of a one-to-one -one where Osha basically tells him, hey, if I fail to, you know, de-escalate this situation with May, I need you to be able to take her down uh, and capture her. She's like uh, basically saying she already failed once. So she fears that she's going to freeze up if she sees May again. Yord tells her, you know, that's not going to happen. We're going to be fine. But She's like, hey, please just promise me. We get a little bit of lightsaber action with Master Soul basically cuts down a giant moth type of thing uh, as they were walking through this like creepy looking forest. May has a further discussion with Kimir of about what it means to destroy a Jedi without any weapon. Um, you know, she keeps saying that it's basically impossible. And Kimir tells her, it's like, no, it's not. You know, you just kind of have to, you know, figure it out. You've, you've destroyed two Jedi already, but you did it your way. Um, and if you don't do it the Master's way, he's basically going to kill you. Like, you have to do what he tells you. But then May sets up uh, a trap for Kamir. He basically ensnares him. And then she's like, you know what? The fact that I know that Osha is alive basically changes everything. Um, I'm done with the Master's, you know, plan. 
I'm just going to turn myself in uh, to Master Kilnaka and to the Jedi. And, you know, we'll figure it out. Of course, Kamira's like, you shouldn't do that. Um, they're going to put you in prison. And May says, well, not after I tell them everything that I know about the Master, right? And so she basically leaves him there hanging from a tree. May shows up to Kilnaka's uh, place. And lo and behold, and surprise, good old Master Kilnaka is dead. Slash by what it looks to be a lightsaber, judging by his wound. And so she quickly realizes that he's here, right? And as she is realizing this, the Jedi catch up to the house of Kalnaka and basically surround it. But as everybody is fixated on Kalnaka's house and basically yelling at May to come up with her hands up, Master Soul has this feeling and he's about the only one that notices and as he turns around, our dark figure appears behind Osha. He gets right in front of her as the Jedi just basically watch. And he ignites, you know, his red lightsaber, giving us one of the cool scenes from the trailer. Of course, all of the Jedi squad ignite the lightsabers. Very cool scene. You know, we see some blue, some uh, green, and of course, some yellow. And uh, they tell her, you know, basically get out of the way, run. The Sith Force pushes her actually out of the way, which I thought was interesting. And then he Force pushes the entire Jedi squad away, giving us the coolest scene, I think, from the trailer. Uh, this looked very, very cool, actually. And that is it. That is basically the end of the episode. Just as the Jedi start hitting the ground, you know, the, uh, the credits roll. So that is episode four, Day. Okay, so what did you think about this fourth episode of Acolyte with halfway through the season. Um, I thought it was fun, actually. I, I liked the way that they kind of gave us a plot twist with Master Kanaka being killed off camera. It was kind of obvious up to a point that, you know, the dark figure was going to show up because May was basically, you know what? I'm done. I'm out. Uh, I'm just, I just want to go hang out with my sister now. Come here. He he is kind of loyal, but at the same time, he's trying to keep her on track with her mission, you know, to the master. It's going to be interesting to know if if he's the master, if he is the master's brother or if he really is just like another pawn, because I feel that he has a lot more insight uh, into the plan, you know, the master's plan uh, than he's letting on. I thought how Osha changed her mind about going after May was kind of weak. Um, I don't know why they would make it such a big deal out of the opening scene with her and Jackie, um, where Osha is basically just explaining over and over that she's done. She can't, you know, go against her sister and all that. And all it took was Master Soul to come up to her and be like, hey, you want to join? And she's like, OK, yeah, let's go. I don't know. I thought that was kind of weak. It was very cool to see, um, you know, a Jedi like the the one that looks like Kiara Mundi. It, it, it was also interesting to see in one of the scenes where the Jedi are gathering and talking about how to handle May that um, one of them brings up the fact that they should call a high council meeting, which leads me to believe none of those guys in there were really part of the, you know, the top right council for the Jedi. And they actually decide against it because they're like, OK, if we talk to the high council, then the high council talk to the Senate. And then this information is going to leak out to the rest of the galaxy and we're basically going to look bad. So the Jedi definitely care about, you know, preserving their image. Um, Master Vernastra even says it, right? We got to handle this like ourselves. And of course, we finally got one of the coolest scenes, if not the coolest scene in the trailers that we saw before the show uh, with our dark master basically force pushing, you know, like eight Jedi at the same time. Uh, to note is that he force pushed Osha out of the way first. So obviously, you know, he, it cares about her. Uh, but yeah, let's see how the next episode goes. And it's going to be interesting to see if they actually go into combat with him, because for the one dude to take on eight Jedi, that's going to be interesting. If he can actually pull it off, then this, this could be a force to be reckoned with. And remember, we don't really know much about this Sith. If he's in fact a Sith, let's assume he is. Um, the Dark Plagueis book is no, is not canon. So technically, we don't really know officially who's around in this period of time. Yes, it could be Darth Tenebris. We, we talked about it before. 
But again, it, it could be somebody completely new because technically we don't have an official source uh, material, you know, for this specific period. So just keep that in mind. Okay, that is going to do it, Troopers. Thank you again for joining me here. Once again, do not forget to hit that like button. Leave us in your comment if you like this episode better than episode three. Ooh, that episode three, guys. It, it, it's, yeah, it's one for the books. Uh, so, yeah, please let us know what you thought about this episode. Also, please do not forget to follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, at General Kenobi's Bunker. Thanks again, and may the force be with you.